over on YouTube, it's Alex here, back with some more... No, not actually Boon Beach. We are doing something a little bit different. Now, I have been thinking to myself for a while now that I probably could do with, and should, start trying to expand the my uh, content base, as I've been doing Boon Beach for all this time. Now, of course, I will still continue with Boon Beach, but what I'm thinking of doing, at least until I have a, some public support behind it, or I really want to do something different, of course, I will try to put out something different every once in a while. Basically just having my Boom Beach videos as normal, with a few other videos sprinkled in uh, in between things. And as you can see, I'm going to do a quick Subnautica video. Nothing like a Let's Play. I did do one in the past, but it never really got much in the ways of attention, so I uh, won't be revisiting that. And also, as kind of usually speaking, if I keep pausing, it's because I'm having a drink. drink of beer that is because of course it's the weekend when I'm recording this so in this video we're going to be discussing some practical base designs because that's the thing Subnautica there is a lot of base building and you, you can do some really cool stuff in this game now I don't do much survival but I do like doing some creative stuff making some bases both practical and otherwise and I should also mention um, on the top right there, that is the uh, build of the game I am currently using. It's the current stable build, at least at the time I'm recording this video. So the things you're going to see might vary if you're looking down at this video uh, later on. You will also notice I have quite a wide FOV, at least you see more of the uh, Seamoth than, you, than you're currently looking at, at the moment, but that is, that is because I have the FOV set to about 80 degrees rather than default 60. Um, even though that does mean some of the view models are kind of weird, like I have a lot of the, of the uh, ship in my face. Yeah, and even though I will try to record at 60 frames, I'm only doing about 40 right now, because this game is really not kind to of my computer. Basically, my CPU usually goes to hell and dies. So hopefully everything does not lag too badly while I'm doing this, and thank you, uh... <laughs> was that a spade fish that just hit me? I don't know. Um, so anyway, yeah, these base designs, like I said, they, they, I, they range from everything, um, like, uh, resource caches to, uh, uh the sea shed, which is a, a name I coined for a, a very compact but fully functional base, something you can do on the cheap, all the way to, um, the largest of the practical sizes, and even one which is a little ways off, um, the largest of which is, I think, uh, over, not that way, it's over there. The largest of which going to that beacon is uh, an actual proper home. If you were, if you were going to role play in this game, then I have a base to show you here. So I have quite a few little bases here. Everything from the resource cache to uh, the, like the largest of the uh, practical bases. When I say practical, I'm I'm referring to. Uh, Hello, I did not see you spawn there, mate. Um, I'm referring to uh, <laughs> practical as in it doesn't, it's not too fluffed out, it's not meant to look the best, but it will provide as, as much functionality as you require. So uh, we will brief, we'll go through each one briefly just to show you what each one is. So this tiny, tiny little thing I'm going to be calling the resource cache. Now these things I would imagine you to place either next to a heat source in terms of geothermal, or you would put them, uh, like I've done, although I've had to terraform this slightly, uh, you, you'd put them near the surface where that you can get some sunlight. Now, this is literally meant to be put here if you need emergency supplies. So we have a like, little med kit here, uh, some storage, uh, you've got communications relay, batteries, and a power cell charging fabricator, and even a little seat which you can sit down if you desire. So, like I said, the idea of these is you, you put, like, you, you, you would put these on longer journeys, or, uh, I suppose with geothermal anyway, you, you could put these down in the, in the, uh, active lava zone if you were going, like, a really long journey, or even use these, um, use these as, like, waypoints, so you can, as you, uh, progress through those cave systems, you can put a few of these around and use them as just little resource caches and, uh, supplies and stuff like that, but, like I said, this is the cheapest of the bases uh, that I've made here, and uh, I kind of like the look of it. And you even have a window to look out of. Doesn't look too bad, I don't so say myself. Um, so anyway, let's pop into here. And then we'll go into the sea sheds. The sea sheds um, are very simply, actually I have two of them here. Um, these are simple one, and, well, one multi-purpose room, um, and they pretty much contain everything you need pretty much everything you need except a moon pool but then I have other bases for that there's one over there 
and I have these two here. The one on the left is the deep sea version. Now what I mean by deep sea is it actually has nuclear power and would be useful if you're going to put it somewhere a little bit more off the beaten path. And the one on the right, actually it's going dark now, but the one on the right is the sort of shallower or geothermal power, whichever you want to put it. But if we go to the um, normal one, which in my mind is probably the most fleshed out at the moment. So, as you can see, it's a single multi-purpose room. You have like pretty much everything you need here. You've even got like a few ancillaries like beds, some re recycling, I suppose. Uh, you've got some plant pots for food, which I have not populated just yet. Water filtration, your uh, modification stations of storage, window, fabricator, more storage, uh, small food supply. If you want to have uh, some fish there, photo frame at the back. And in here we've even got power cells, batteries, med kit, and communications relay. Like I said, it's nothing too uh, nothing too special or too crazy, but it is just a single multi-purpose room. But you can now just have everything in there, and uh, there you go. It is, it's gone dark again. Um, there is a, There should be a way to um, actually disable or like have the... Wait, it's not... I don't know. Buttons. Um... But if I, if I just get my seam off a little closer. So this is the deep sea version. A little bit larger. Um, I do actually have a lot of hull reinforcement. Not that it needs it. Uh, the hull reinforcement would be there for just... You will think about it. If, you're, um, got, if you have a nuclear reactor, you'd want that thing to be protected. So uh, if we go into here, and apparently this is inactive. Because apparently it's depleted all the uranium. And all, I have no idea how that happened. There's, there's, even, um, there's even a fish in here. Fish, come here. Uh, boomerang, there we go. So, I even have some random plant pots in here, but this is the reactor room, so you just put this, uh, keep that filled with uh, uranium, as you do. And up here is very similar um, to the other sea shed, but a uh, little bit more windows, got two of them this time. Medification station, stations, bed, communications relay, basically, basically all, all the guff that you'll need, uh, but in, this actually has two floors. So, yeah, sea shed, sea shed version 2, or the uh, deep sea shed, or just the um, nuclear powered ship. So, you know, take take these. It's, it's, it's literally the simplest design you can come up with, and it's probably something that people have done before, but I just thought, why the hell not? Let's mention it. And, uh, is that Are those two reef backs. Um, do, I, do I want to know what you two are doing? Anyway, <laughs> getting creepy. So, now we're going to move on to some of the larger bases. Don't have too many of these, but we have uh, this one here. This is a research outpost. So imagine this, you plonk it down pretty much in the middle or on the outskirts of a couple of biomes that you uh, really want to explore or, ho or have something more permanent in place. Something larger than a sea shed with a few more facilities, a moon pool and a few other things. So this one we're actually going to go into and we're going to actually take a look around. Um, frame rate is a little, is a bit spazzy, but like I said, um, there's, uh, my computer hates hates this game, and also there is actually a lot of buildings in this area, so it is a bit more laggy. So, uh, so we have the moon pool here, we've got the docking station, modification station, whatever you want to call it, and a battery and power cell over there. So you have those two things. Walking into here, sorry about the grass clipping through the floor, but the main room is here with uh, bed, water, modification, health and your storage and fabrication corner, so that's pretty self-explanatory. And then you go off to this side, which you have the, uh, another communications relay. Did I? I forgot I must have. I might have put two down, which I obviously did. Uh, but, you know, here you can uh, have your scanners, have your little, um, if I just plop into one of these, you have your little scanning pods, and you can even see, even see yourself through the window, so there you go. Uh, so yeah, the little scanning room. Um, I still would love these these scanners to actually have more range. Personally, 500 meters is not enough. Not in this game. You, I'll come back to that later. But anyway, going into here, uh, we have or this this would be full of Reginald or some other uh, fish that you want to breed, and you can get yourself some uh, food that way. My frames are dipping below 30. That's great. And I've gone with a bioreactor this time, something a bit different. Um, bioreactors themselves don't produce much power, but I'm thinking if you had enough greenhouse stuff in here. So this is quite eco, uh, this base, but also this is the sort of base I wouldn't expect you to stay for very long. It's, it's a base that 
And it's going to spam me now with you can't get stuff back from the bioreactor. That's a random bug I've noticed. Um, but this um, this base is kind of, you know, you pop into it, you might stay there for a few days, but you're not going to stay for too long and you're going to move on, or at least do some scanning and grab some materials and move on. So that that is this, um, that's the research outpost or the resource re research base, or just, just a small base, whatever you want to call it. So now, if I move on... If we, if we go to all these exosuit markers, we're going to go into the largest of the practical bases. Uh, this one here is the largest I would recommend for anything practical in the survival. But this is this is getting towards uh, late game for the simple reason of I have three, yes, three extra moon pools here, each one with a different exosuit or a prawn suit, whatever you want to call them. Uh, each one, each one of these suits actually has a specific role. One for combat, one for mining, and one for straight up exploring. So we actually have three to choose from. Mind you, I will say one quick disclaimer: the upgrades uh, are in each of these suits is not actually set in stone. I, in some respects, I kind of uh, have got a few upgrades that I would probably change. Like the miner, I would probably sacrifice something like the. Um, uh, pressure compensator for an extra storage unit, that sort of thing. So um, that is that, and it's, it's 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 pretty much a tower design as you can see. So we've got four extra four levels. The back moon pool is for me, so I can get in. So you have some uh, hatches, scanner room. The scanner room I would have put a bit lower, but you see you see this um, this aerial here. Let's just say that sticks right through the um, the floor of the uh, scanning room. So. Couldn't do that in the end, so if we, if, we, if, we, if we pop into here, my frame rate's going to hell. Um, so inside here, yeah, this is just the Seamoth dock, and I don't think I actually ever put a modification station uh, down or vehicle thingy, so let's just quickly add one in. There we go. Interesting glitch when you update something inside here, it decides to uh, re dock itself. So, anyway, this is the second floor, I believe. Um, this one's not as finely decorated as the others. Um, I kind of got a bit uh, run out of time, I suppose. I was uh, getting a little bit bored after a while. So anyway, um, but yeah, the ground floor is the exosuit room, uh, as you can see, which we'll get to in a second. We have um, we have a lack of frame rate. Uh, <laughs> we got the uh, storage and fabrication room, two hatches. Um, let me actually just go up. So oh yeah, you can kind of see this is the bedroom and some plants and modifications. Uh, we have power from a nuclear reactor this time, um, charging spots, uh, cabinets, that sort of stuff, and the food area, so you'd have your Reginald growing in here, breeding and such, uh, your scanning room, and over here we have the observatory, it's looking out over the back of the Seamoth moon pool. Uh, not that these moon pools actually have any specific, uh, you know, you, you have to use a specific... Um, uh, vehicle in them, I just I designate them that. So, if we go very quickly into each uh, one of these prawn rooms, as you can see, there are three of them. Uh, this one here is the miner, which is just a simple drill arm and a normal uh, hand, I suppose. Normal hand is useful to actually pick up the item when you're done. This one's probably the exploring one, it looks like it, and I believe I've just gone with uh, a grapple. Oh, wait, no, this is not. This is the. Uh no, this is combat, sorry, which has more like reinforcements, which is torpedo and a hand for punching things. So you have a bit of melee and a bit of uh, normal. So th this one here is exploration, so uh, much more. In, it's got like the thermal reactor and things like that, some power efficiency, uh, pressure compensator, all that sort of stuff. Grappler and uh, propulsion cannon, so you can actually fling things around. So th those are the three vehicles, and each one has its own modification station. Not that it really matters, but... Uh, they are there. Now I'm going to get out of here because my frame rate is going steadily through the floor, so I apologize. This is meant to be a 60 FPS video, but it really isn't going to be. It'll get better in a minute because we are now going to take a little bit of a detour. And for some reason, it's. Uh, yeah, I've got to close and reopen that menu to get the day cheat to work. So. I can find that beacon. It's over here now. This final base, uh, which I did, which is probably the largest of all of them that I've built. But the thing is, I, no, that was not the beacon. That I literally ran into the beacon. Uh, <laughs> um, it will be over there. It's down there. Yes, yeah, because this one, this one's more of a. If you're role playing, it's actually got a lot more features that you would, 
you know, you're likely to have more fit than all those sort of features and things that, like I said, if you're role playing, you can sort of put yourself in this home as as it is basically a home. Uh, it's quite far down. It's actually in the Blood Kelp region, uh, so it's going to be a little bit of a drive. I could enable the speed cheat, but I can at least um, go through a few things. So it's in the Blood Kelp. Um, but it's also it's on route to the Grand Reef, but it um, there's that giant uh, crack in the ground uh, where the blood kelp is. So it's a pretty much a straight shot down and a straight shot back up. So it, uh, your your sea moth can easily reach it. Uh, you can easily get down down there. You can easily get back up. It's no no problem. Uh, so it's, from a convenience standpoint, getting in and out of this home is easy enough. And you're also right on one of the entrances. Uh, to the Lost River, so you actually have quite a few options in where you can go. But location is pretty meaningless. We actually need to uh, get here and actually show you. So let me have a quick sip of beer. So yeah, sorry about the um, uh, slight drops in frames, but this game does sort of drop frames when it loads anyway. And hello, Reef, back. You're a little bit close to the land there, mate. Oh, my frames. But, yeah, I think this base is about 600-some-odd metres down, I think. It's actually, it's, it's some sonar. Let's have a look around. So, um, if if anyone, if any of you know Subnautica, you should be able to recognise this. Because the... Um, actually, let me go straight up, because the entrance is just about there. So, if I quickly head to the surface a second and take a look at where we are, we should be... I'm not sure if we'll be in sight of the islands, the... Um, the the big one, which should be over here somewhere. Uh, it's not there. Well, the aurora's over there. <laughs> so, oh, the island's over there. You can sort of just about see the... Uh, there's some, like, stuff up there. Some bits of the base. So, okay, it's a little bit further east, I'd say. So, okay, a bit a bit further out. Getting my locations right. But you can actually start... You can actually see some of the holes in the ground there. So, we are nearing... Uh, the location, and also finally, my frame rate is going up. Uh, to oh, I I spoke too soon. It's gone down the crapper. Um, it's probably because it's, as you can see, it's loading the blood kelp. So we are all the way down here, and there's actually a piece of the aurora here. If anyone is wondering, uh, not that there's much in there. I did actually have a. I did take a. My, your the scanner uh, bots were an, uh, had enough range to go all the way up this far. So. Should turn on some lights, because uh, as you can see from the sonar, we are down this huge crack in the floor, and there is the base. So yeah, this is definitely the largest, um, and it has a lot more sort of homely features. Um, even though there is no real um, place to put your uh, seam off exactly, not. I mean, I think they were talking about adding a way to sort of dock your seam seam off or something. Uh, not, not, your cyclops, sorry. Uh, to your base to receive power and stuff. That was meant to be a thing, but at the moment it isn't. So here we are at this base. Uh, it looks like my frame rate is still not the best anyway. Uh, it's a bit better than it was. So yeah, it's a lot more. Um, it's a lot more fleshed out. We got some like uh, ancillary things like uh, those spotlights and stuff. But anyway, this is the Seamoth dock. Not that it. Once again, not that it matters. But there are two of them. Uh, we have some power cell charging here and with the exosuit we have another one this one's the exploration model and you can also see this one's a little bit more intelligently thought out we actually have bulkheads to deal with I do love the animations in this game the animations are so butter smooth it's like it's just awesome even if my frame rate isn't buttery smooth so anyway now there's one thing I have not done with this base that I would do if, uh, or I would recommend you do if you were to copy this, but to have signs, because at the moment, no, no one, none of you will know where to, get, where you're, where you, you know, where we're going. I know because I built it, but, um, but to prove a point, signs to, to sort of designate places would be an idea. So, at this end, is power room. Uh, this one is just well, nuclear reactor. Uh, personally, because of where we are, it's pretty cold down here and. Uh, we even have a bioreactor that we do actually have a greenhouse, or at least the closest thing you're going to get to a greenhouse um, upstairs. But I'll show you that in a minute. But that is meant to be the power room with respective facilities to uh, keep that going. So anyway, we will um, let's let's head upstairs while while it's ne it's nearest uh, to me. So this is um, also the production area, I suppose. So I mean, down here. 
is more batteries. Um, that's I think, I think that's the thing. The uh, the power cells are over there in the moon pools. Battery charging's in here. Uh, we use a lot more storage this time. I decided to flesh it out a bit. Med kits and a fabricator, modification station, and that sort of stuff. Even a few shelves over there. Going up here, this is meant to be the research lab where you can sit down at, at this very short chair miles away from the uh, desk but and uh, just look out and observe what you can see or what little you can see I mean there are spotlights uh, as you'll be able to see every once in a while they'll uh, scan around but uh, and there's even a um, what are they shockers those um, eel things with electricity around them I think I don't know but you, you still, you'll see them wandering around um, they're uh, just here but this is like this is, like I said it's meant to be a research lab you could role play that you're just researching the area and stuff like that, but you could you pretty much have an overview over the majority of the base. Over there is like the living quarters. Uh, the power section is over here. Uh, those two little buildings there. Moon poles are right over there, so you can sort of see where things are. It's not it's not terribly different uh, than what I mentioned. Now over here, this is the complete opposite. Now this section down there, if you recognise the colour of the water, you you are certainly correct. That direction is to the Lost River. Now the problem is cameras don't go as far as I'd like. They really don't. Cameras do not go far at all. But I, I'm not lying. There is this is the Lost River. Uh, so if you um, wish to explore that, you certainly can. Mind you, camera the camera's range is pretty pathetic, so you can't go that far. Mind you, um, she may as well uh, fly a little bit on here but if you go far enough you can just about see the skeleton uh, that big uh, creature skeleton whatever that big thing is that's dead that's like way dead down here now in some of the I think the development version of this game at least currently I mean what I'm saying right now is gonna be out the window eventually um, but eventually there's there's some of the uh, precursor bases which is a lot of the lore of the game I would search it up if you want to know what I mean by the precursors and all the above here so um, there's a lot of stuff there, and as as things start generating, there is the skeleton. Camera's going to go a bit grainy here, but we can we can actually get up to some of the ribs here, so you you, you can sort of see it, um, but you can't get that. F and um, we are lagging the hell on back. Uh, just bear bear with me, guys. Um, it's that was just my uh, my CPU having a spaz. So um, the range of these cameras, if anyone's wondering, is 500 meters. So we can get to sort of around here but the camera will start to go dark in a second so we really can't go much further than uh, these first couple of ribs so you can get to it the skull is in the distance you can't actually see it but anyway let's head back uh, but like I said if you want to look up the lore of the game I would search it up online but the precursors were these creatures that uh, um, one way or another and there's lots of reasons which I won't spoil it uh, even though I am mo I'm like the biggest spoiler in the world <laughs> uh, I won't this time but uh, there they are the reason why they uh, destroyed the Aurora and uh, the other ships before you so that is that and one of their bases is meant to be down there uh, there it's been pretty much confirmed already there's, a, there's some placeholder material or something to the effect of I, I search up IGP's channel um, he's done a lot of subnautica videos and he's done a video actually explaining a lot about the the, uh, uh, the precursors and he's also got the uh, development uh, sort of branch of the game so he can at least uh, show you what I can't um, or at least because I'm on I'm on the stable build of the game if anyone's wondering so let's pop back in here uh, as we can see so um, all those blips are um, oh yeah this from the 3d model you can kind of see this 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 whole place is just one giant crevice uh, so anyway we'll quick we'll head back here and we'll go into this side room now this is the greenhouse where you can do any kind of uh, research research any um, plant life and uh, things of that nature there's also where you would uh, grow some food if you so desired and you would also uh, grow any plants if you want to f uh, fuel the bioreactor the bioreactor is basically for backup uh, the idea is you'd run it you run this base off of nuclear power at least because of where it is uh, but you would uh, run it on bio if you were out of uh, uranium for whatever reason but I think uranium is pretty common down here don't quote me on that. I've not actually, I've not actually gone and looked. Maybe I should have like just got got the scanning room to do that. And oh yes, I have lots of glass plates and ceiling. So we're head so heading off this way. This is the living quarters. It consists of actually four buildings or at least four rooms, which we will go go and uh, show you now. 
I can watch that door animation forever. It's it's just awesome. Uh, so here is the water room, at least in terms of uh, it's got the filtration units, and it also has a door to the outside where you can uh, take some, uh, you could harvest some blood oil. And you also have a resident shocker, which uh, I'm personally just going to avoid. But yeah, that's that's that room so nothing too much to say got some couple bits of storage um, this like this is probably not the best use of the space but close enough uh, so in here once again an another aquarium if you want to have some Reginald or other fish you want to uh, either research or eat uh, speaking of eating here is I suppose the uh, kitchen mess hall whatever you want to call it uh, just use some of the other materials that you can find on the Aurora so you got like you got yourself a snack machine with uh, whatever the hell is in there. <laughs> Shame you can't actually use it, but there you go, got a bin here, fabricated if you want to cook some food. Table and chair. Why the hell not? Uh, counter over there. Got a little aquarium to my left there. Some more storage and some just cabinets and shelves. That sort of stuff, so not too bad. Now, I kind of wish I could stick a door in here, but I couldn't. I mean, I'll, I'll even show you. I can't actually stick a door in here because over here is the bedroom. Just it's a bedroom, not much to say, got a nice big window, you can observe the local shocker here and the uh, just some nice glass windows, there is some um, uh, what the hell are they called, spotlights that are currently combing the area, you can actually see one of them looking over there, so it's a nice place to sort of sit down, you can either sit this way or sit the other way, you've got some plants, got a communications relay, I mean if you're role playing you could say this communications relay, you know he's just gonna, you know, your guy's gonna be just waiting listening just in hope that someone's going to be here to rescue him that sort of thing so there's that got another uh, another photo frame here so I don't actually have any screenshots but if you did you can plonk them there but this is how you're meant to sit in the uh, in the seat anyway so that that is this base I, I don't I couldn't say I have any names for these bases but this one like I said is the uh, uh, more for role playing less practical but it does make use of some of the uh, features here I don't actually have any of the uh, posters and uh, that sort of stuff but but otherwise um, this is um, I don't know it's, it's a good spot because it's convenient to get to the surface it's convenient to get to some of the deeper places in this game like the Lost River and the Lost River does go to the lava zone I, I'm pretty sure it does um, so you can actually get uh, go around and look around and I don't know this, this is I'm, I'm actually I'm um, quite proud of this base it's nothing you know it's probably not it's nothing that someone else couldn't have thought, but you know. But then at the end of the day, this whole video, as, as I'm going to be near, I'm nearing the end of the video now, but the whole point of this video was just to give you some ideas for faces and some other concepts. But um, I think you can kind of agree. Um, I do prefer the smaller and uh, more compact bases, like the sea sheds. The sea sheds, I really do like the, the idea of. And, and if I was to do a survival, I would usually build a sea shed and just use uh, or just have that as my first base and then I build one of these when I can but of course since um, like I said there is there is meant to be um, what is it called it, there's meant to be Cyclops docking but of course there is not uh, that currently in this version of the game uh, version 36618 uh, just just so you know so that could be something to change but, but with what I have currently available this is what I've done and this looks pretty cool if I don't say so myself. So anyway, thank you for watching. So this is a little bit of a random video, like I said. I'm, but I'm trying to sprinkle some other types of videos in, in between all the Boom Beach videos. But uh, the next video will most likely be Boom Beach uh, in some way or another. So anyway, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video.